Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a composer year-end review. Um, so you can see I have the composer screen pulled up here. Let's just reduce my screen a little bit here. So you can see it's year to date, January 1st, 2023 to December 29th, 2023. There are no more trading days left uh, in 2023. So you can see that the Portfolio started at $209,598.85. And you can see at the top here, it's end at $259. Um, and um, so I actually pulled $20,000. Uh, I had to take care of something in a personal matter. So I pulled $20,000 again at the kind of the worst time here, November 29th. Uh, you can see it went from $244 to 220 Two and it clawed all the way back, even from 222 to 259 the end of the year. You know, had that 20,000 been left in, um, you know, that 20,000 would have likely been 24, 25, 26, as you can see, you know, from when it was pulled. So it was definitely a costly uh, pooling, you know, definitely opportunity cost lost there. Um, but for the sake of being fair and even, you know, hyper conservative, um, to do the math, I just added the 20,000 here. So that would give me a 33.3%. So again, had I left it in, maybe that 33.3 becomes 37, 36, 38, somewhere in there. Um, the S&P return was a 24, 26, mid 20. So uh, definitely attained alpha uh, on the S&P, um, which is always good, uh, especially after, you know, the last few years, which, um, you know, we had uh, been so-so, especially for some of the strategy I've been running. So definitely a great year. Um, any year you return 33.3%, uh, it's a good year. And um, so what I wanted to do before getting into um, some of the individual symphonies uh, and so on and so forth, just to kind of take that 33.3%, I'm going to jump over here and just kind of showing the, the power of compound interest. So we're over here now. Um, you know, a lot of people... Um, with investing, you know, if you don't take the time to play with a compound in interest calculator, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, it's a quite powerful exercise. Um, you can see I put in what the year ended with, and this is just hypothetical. If you, you know, 15 years, so the next 15 years, um, if I were to return a 33.3%, which would, you know, put me in the 1% uh, of investors. That doesn't mean every year is 33.3%, um, but it's, you know, one year it might be 50, one year it might be uh, five, negative 10, but overall the the um, compound annual growth rate, annualized return 33.3. You can see the 259 in Composer would be 19 million. Um, you can see, you can, you can kind of geek out on this. You want to do it 20 years, 81 million. You want to do it, shorten it, five, just a million uh, in the next five years. Uh, and then, you know, you can also play it. Let's go back to the 15 just to show you the power of alpha. So let's, you know, most people, if you walked into a financial advisor's office and they're a, an indexer and they're going to tell you to buy the index fund, which nothing wrong with that. They're going to generally say, OK, your annualized would be on a low end seven on a high end 11 uh, or 12. So let's put on the higher end. Um, let's put so again, 19.3 million. Uh, even at the higher end of an index fund, 11%, it takes, it, you know, it's about an $18 million difference, I'll give or take. So you can see the power of attaining massive alpha. Um, you know, Jim Simmons, Rentec, Medallion Fund, 66% after fees. I believe it's after fees. Yeah, not before fees. So after fees, so 519 million. So there you go. So if you're returning that, that Medallion Fund returns, just kind of fun to play with, but let's go back now to Composer. So here we are. So let's go to the percentage. I just want to show you, remember I gave the Medallion Fund 66%. Um, these are right here, some of the um, strategies that have done really, really well this year. Um, so you see TQQ for the long term. The one thing that's, uh, I would say, overwhelming a little bit about the Discord is there's so many permutations on permutations. Um, one of the things I like to do when I allocate capital is I like to take these two, three thousand dollar bites. Um, so, for example, I'd rather run if I'm going to say allocate ten thousand dollars to T Triple Q for the long term. 
I'd rather run five different permutations of it at 2000 than choose one at 10,000. Um, and so you can see here, now these two almost performed identical. So they were basically in the same uh, holdings throughout the year and they returned 162, 166, 165, 162, 161. Um, the two best performing year to date. Um, then after that, you have JJ's Canaris, Canary Leverage Light. That's from Jay Wong Jung. He's not uh, too active anymore in the Discord. He was, I think, more in the Slack channel with uh, Cody Haas and Eric Snellman in the beginning. Again, I'm like a composer OG. I was one of the first uh, 10 users. I actually told that story fairly recently. Um, that goes back to my close friend, Logan Kane, um, who was approached by a composer when they were just starting out. He wasn't too interested in their software, but I was. So I was able to access it and uh, you know to be one of the first users. Um, and then, then you see the beta baller. Again, there's so many different permutations of beta baller. Um, this particular one, 84.21. Um, and what's interesting about this, I actually wanna bring up this beta baller as well, because it seems like uh, many people maybe started running beta baller or various uh, versions of it, and then they were down significantly in the beginning uh, and then kind of bailed on it. And, um, you know, one of the things I think that separates me from a lot of different people is, is the ability to deal with vol volatility in investing um, and having really the soul more of um, Jack Bogle or Warren and Charlie at Berkshire um, than a, uh, a manic uh, day trader, swing traders, in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, obviously, this is composer trade. So these are trading um, to a certain extent, but I, I see them more as investing systems. So um, very l I'm less likely to bail um, on any particular symphony. I, once I allocate capital, for the most part, I'd like to be able to set that for 5, 10, 15, 20 years uh, and to be able to, to, let, it, to let it work. Um, that's also why uh, I'm very uh, hesitant to use a lot of single stocks in symphonies whenever i see single stocks in fact one of the beta ballers that um, did well for me um it was one that i amended i removed garen phillips as a better qqq because that a better qqq had single stocks i believe i replaced it with t triple q um just because i think that you know if you're running a symphony for three months sure that's fine but if you're trying to run something for 10 15 20 years um i think you're better off with uh with etfs than single stocks um because capitalism is brutal what what's hot today um, you know, what's successful today may not be, and, and, you know, it's very likely it won't be in 20 years. I mean, there are examples, obviously, that the Amazons, the Apples and such. Um, but, you know, look at the S&P 500 list um, from 1985, from 1965, uh, from 1995. You know, capitalism is brutal in that way. Um, you know, that uh, is one writer, financial writer, uses the term, the, the, the index is self-cleansing. It's constantly being replaced. So, uh, I prefer indexes for, again, long-term strategies. So then you go here. This is a popular one in the beginning. I think even on the Slack channel, the 200-day moving average one. Then you're getting into the Manhattan Project uh, from Derek Nielsen, Order 66. Another, again, a permutation of the 200-day moving average. Around, I think three, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Leverage 70-30. This would be what I would call my, my Logan Kane strategy here. Uh, I think he had written about it in Seeking Alpha. It was like a 70% UPRO, 30% TLT, just rebalanced, um, you know, tracing that back, uh, you know, has done quite well. You can see here it's returned 46.64. Again, another 200-day moving average. And then that same version, but with TMF instead of TLT, um, you know, just slightly under about 6% lower. Then you have my, my OG strategies, what I would call first-generation symphonies. Um, Balanced Alpha, I was running, gosh, I was running that in Motif. I was running that in Folio. Motif and Folio no longer exist. And then it was transferred to Interactive Brokers. And finally, from Interactive Brokers, I was able to roll it uh, into, uh, into Composer. Um, and these are strategies. What I, the reason I call them first-generation um, strategies is they're just basically leveraged ETF rebalancing symphonies uh, akin or related to the iconic hedge fundy strategy. I think the hedge fundy strategy might have been 55, 45 UPRO TMF rebalanced. Um, this one includes some more tickers, um, but you can see this year it's done quite well after getting hammered due to TMF 
um, which is the leveraged version of TLT. And so that in an inflationary period, long-term bonds are going to get massacred, and, and that happened. Um, but you can see strong rebound year for that. And then you see um, Dippy Cutie. That was one of Garen's. You see Garen, Pietros, Eric. Um, you know, this is one that um, Garen, uh, I think, did a YouTube video on. And then um, finishing out with 23.46. Um, balanced Alpha version 3. That was basically Derek Nielsen. It was, it's fascinating to see the, the evolution, if you will, of Composer. It was Derek Nielsen taking a look at the balanced alpha, which is basically just a rebalancing symphony and taking a first generation symphony and take it to a second or third generation where it's, there's some signals and switches and logic that are taking you out of TMF at certain periods. Um, so you're not getting massacred. Um, it's not merely just rebalancing. So you can see that's underperformed um, uh, the uh, initial balanced alpha this year. But if you were to back test that to 2016, that one outperforms the original because it's, it's moving, I think, from TMF to TMV um, in the last few years when uh, TMF was getting slaughtered. So um, that uh, that's there. So if you just kind of come down here and you can see these are my, I allocated it based on values. So you can see because I was running these strategies like with lots of capital in um, Motif, Folio Interactive Broker before Composer. You can see they've nearly, um, you know, back to even here, this is only about 6,000 off. Um, this is about 11. So if there's a strong, um, you know, 2024, this will get back to where I initially transferred in. So notwithstanding these two, then you start to going down and you start seeing from here down, really the Discord symphonies, the third generation symphonies. You have Moonshot, you know, 3,000 to 4,400, that 200 day. Uh, and this is what I'm excited about showing, too, because I remember when I first started doing Composer videos in 2021, there were these absolutely insane back tests. And, you know, the, the, the skeptics, the cynics of the world would say, oh, it's overfitting. It's, it's hindsight bias. It's not going to work with real money. Well, here's real money and here's real returns. I mean, let's just um, let's kind of go here. This is 200 day moving average version 1.3. And you see at the top here, it's live and simulated. So simulated. You can hate on all you want. You can say it's not accurate or it is accurate, but, you know, it was uh, it's overfit. So but here you go with real, real money from January 1st to December 29th, um, 2095 to 3448. That's real money. If I sell that now, I can take 3400 from the strategy and go on a, a Royal Caribbean or celebrity cruise with it. Right. 85.1 annualized return. Again, this is where I think distinguishes me from a lot of people. When this is 34.1% down, I'm not, I'm not uh, touching this. I am, I've allocated and um, for the most part, it, I'd like to let this sit for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, you can see this was a Derek Nielsen and then uh, Garrett Phillips and then Cody Haas. You know, Cody, like I said, was from the Slack channel at the time, Eric Snellman's Slack channel. So this is one of the kind of Slack channel ones. Um, and so you can see it here. Again, 85.1. Again, let's just have fun with it. Again, I'm not saying that over time this is going to have an 85.1% return. But let's just, let's just play with that and uh, show you the 85.1. And let's do 10 years instead of 15. 122 million uh, in in 10 years now. Let and now, now let's go. Let's do this. So let's say okay, great. You can say okay. The, the S and P was up 24, 26 percent. So of course it's going to you know have a, a great year. So it did. But let's now we can go from the live to simulated. So you can see this is from this year. You can see actually look for most of the year. Look, it was down. S and P is basically flat. You see, it's at four percent. I'm down thirty six percent on this. I start to come back. I'm still majorly trailing S and P, and then you can see October thirty first. I'm still down twenty percent. So many people would have sold. They said, "Oh, this strategy is overfit. This strategy doesn't work. It's failing. It's failing." Uh, and then you can see slowly but surely, as as the market rebounded towards the end of the year. It was right about here, December 6th, and you can see climbing. So now I'm, I'm, I'm in the positive at 19, 21. Oh, so December 20th, still climbing. So there you go. And, there, and uh, 
you know, it, it ends here at, at uh, on the 40% uh, percent on the uh, simulated. Um, so if we go back here now, let's go three years. Simulated, you know, 155, you know, becomes 166,000 on simulated. And again, before people were running real capital, you could kind of like be snarky with that. Um, it's hard to be smart snarky now when you have 2095 to 3448. It's real cap. Let's see. Let's see what 2024 20, holds. So there we go. You can see it's holding right now. T triple Q. How many shares? Um, the current price of it. The market value is about ten dollars in cash in the symphony. This is a strategy. I'm not going to go through the logic here, but you can see it's pretty pretty long. Not as long as maybe like the Manhattan projects and Beta Ballers, but definitely a good amount of logic in here. Um, so that's that. And yeah, so let's now, I also want to look at Schwab just to finish this video out um, and also show that uh, between the two, about 783,000. Um, and let me, let me say, let me say this too. If I didn't have Schwab here, which used to be TD Ameritrade, um, I would probably be less likely to be as experimental in composer i feel that the schwab and the other um, vanguard and other things that are just vanilla index funds buy and hold jack bogle-esque rip van winkle um it, it's kind of like a golden parachute it enables to me to be more aggressive with things like the manhattan project or the beta ballers um, or t triple q for the long term or any other more experimental if I didn't have this and just the vanilla, I would definitely, I would be less likely. But um, so you can see, let me even lower this here. Let me just, there we go. So this was transferred from uh, TD Ameritrade. So I don't know exactly what it started at, but I'll just show you like just how amazing the end of the year was. It looks like November 6th was the transfer um from TD Ameritrade to Schwab at 462. So you can see from November 6th um, till the end of the year, and you can see it's showing two year change. It's not the case. It's just can't, since it was transferred, you know, six months, it's going to show the same three month, you know, year to date. It's all going to show this because that was the beginning, basically, um, the transfer. But I'm, I was up 61,000, 13.3% from November 6th until um, December 30th. So, uh, you know, tremendous, you know, that's just, uh, let's see, that's, yeah, $61,000 um, in that, you know, two months, basically. Um, pretty, pretty impressive. So between the two, I'm at 783, which is nice. Um, interested to see. And again, I like to do these videos um, in a way that, you know, especially with Composer, is that you're able to see these strategies and what they're doing with real money with someone who's not what I would call symphony jumping. Who's not saying, oh, like, again, I gave that 200 day moving hour. If you can kind of go back to that. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at T triple Q for the long term version three. So, uh, and we'll finish out with this one here. But again, max drawdown, you know, 27.2. Um, you know, Jack Bogle is famously saying, and this is with vanilla index funds. Um, you know, he's famous for saying, if you can't take a 40 to 50, 60% drawdown, a 40, 50, 60% drawdown two or three times in your life, then you shouldn't own stocks. Um, you know, that that even with, uh, you know, VOO, uh, you're going to have 1999, you're going to have 2008, 2020. So, or you could say it another way, you know, is it, uh, is it either Warren or Charlie who said, uh, the, the stock market is a great vehicle for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. So... You can see here, um, live, okay, so you can see, you know, this one, um, 169, 2165 into 3348, um, you know, your date, there we go, uh, let's go here, so then we can kind of go simulate it on this, okay, so this is great, so again, this one, obviously, didn't have that. Uh, actually, the other one's more instructive because the other one shows that for most of the year, it was falling behind the S and P, and it would have been quite easy to dismiss the symphony and say, "Oh, it's it's uh, it's false. It's um, it's overfit. It's it's ineffective. It's a failure." Um, this one is it was much more smooth sailing. 
Um, and you can see here, you know, 20, 26.71 is showing S&P. Uh, look at the sharp ratio over two. Uh, and then you can kind of, you know, go three years here, 202%. So 10,000 becomes 275. Um, so yeah, I love that they have the live versus simulated just to kind of see what the actual is. But um, yeah, and this is kind of a Derek Nielsen, Garrett Phillips. Uh, I think Derek had posted this on Reddit and it became quite popular. But um, anyway, so that's it for today. Just kind of want to showcase that. And again, I think that the message, the final message really, or the overarching theme is, is at least when composer for me, I'm looking to allocate for 10, 15, 20 years. I'm not looking to allocate for 10, 15, 20 days. If you do, you're maybe not allowing the symphony to unfold, uh, especially you can see that with the 200 day moving average one I should. So anyways, that's it for today. Over 20 minutes. I uh, hope to do uh, numerous of these in 2024. Take care. Ciao.